everyone and welcome to the Philip show it's an awesome day out i am super excited grab your coffee i am super excited um today it's becoming sweater weather which i really really love and you'll notice that i'm like wearing a hat and i start to wear it more and more as the year kind of continues to go on sidebar it might be because i'm lazy and don't want to cut my hair but we're gonna say it's getting cooler outside so this is sweater weather and hat weather and all of that so here at the Phillips Show, I love journeys, and you know that, and that's why you're sitting here watching and listening wherever you are. It's so interesting how people make such an impact where they are and the story behind how that came to be. The impact that we have on each other is tremendous, whether we know it or not. We teach people things every single day, whether we know it or not, intentionally or not. Now, today, we are speaking to someone who has been teaching, who has been inspiring, and who has been recognized for such amazing work. Founded in 2012 by Dr. Catherine Roma. Kathy Roma, she's here. The World House Choir is a diverse, multicultural, mixed voice choir of 60 to 70 active citizen singers, just regular people, just like you and me. The choir's repertoire is drawn from the music of peace and justice struggles worldwide representing different traditions, including classical, global folk, spirituals, and gospel. The name World House Choir is inspired by the life and the work of Dr. Martin Luther King, who wrote, we have inherited a large house, a great world house, in which we have to learn to live together in peace. Now, our guest today is Dr. Kathy Roma, who has received the Governor's Arts Award. She also received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Gay and Lesbian Association of Choruses. Most recently has been selected as an inductee into the Greene County Women's Hall of Fame. Right on the cusp of the 10 year anniversary of the World House Choir, please help me welcome Dr. Kathy Roma. Kathy! Hey, 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 how are you? That was beautiful, Hi. thank you. Uh, um, you know, that's all, like that's all about you. Oh, you do so much. Thank you so much. You know, it's great to be here. It's great to be with you, the fabulous singer that you are. Does your audience know that? Um, anyway, thank you for that beautiful intro. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You have so much. Um, you have so much going on. And like I said at the beginning, you know, it's so interesting to watch you and meet you and see you do what you do, but have the opportunity to hear the why. We can all we can see the accolades, we can see the passion, but I'm so interested to know how you became the Dr. Kathy Roma that continues to persevere, that continues to move forward and bring other people with you in an inspiring way. So let's start at the beginning. Where are you originally from? Okay, I'm, I'm a Philly girl. I'm from Philadelphia, born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And um, I had a great uh, education. I was really lucky. I think it uh, shaped me uh, for sure. Quaker education. I went to Germantown Friends School. I started in K and I went through 12. And that's uh, probably where I gained a lot of knowledge about uh, social justice and peacemaking and um, you know, sitting there in Quaker meeting, which you had to do uh, when you were a student hearing people talk about uh, the war in Vietnam and pacifism and uh, justice issues. And so I started awakening to these issues really there, not so much through my parents. Um, my parents were conservative um, and they were Republicans, the kind of the old school Republicans, I will say. I was born and raised Catholic, but they sent me to a Quaker school. And that was because my father believed so strongly in education. You know, that was his thing. Yeah. So uh, that's how I got, that was really formative for me, um, the Quaker education. So then I went to Wisconsin and um, 
that was great. Um, University of Wisconsin, Madison during that kind of, I always like to say the revolutionary era, the sixties and the seventies. And there I branched out and was able to do, uh, act on some of the things I believed. You know, my parents didn't want me necessarily going to march in DC from Philadelphia. I wanted to do that um, in 63 for the march in Washington, but you know, I had to do it. I had to, yeah, they, didn't, they weren't too happy about that. So I had to wait till I got away and then could do these things. So it was in Madison that I started becoming more um, active. Um, and then um, I would say that, you know, I started dealing with um, understanding that I was a woman, understanding that I was a lesbian. Um, and so then I'm looking for voices. I'm looking for who to identify with, who do I look up to, who, who are people. And it was the beginning of the women's movement. and. Um, also the LGBT, I should say the gay and lesbian, that's what it was then, the gay and lesbian movement. And so then because I was, I loved music and music was such a part of me, um, I wondered how I could combine these things, right? I, mm. I loved music. how, how could I, um, bring the voices out? What, what were the messages? What? Where, what was missing really is what, you know, were there songs that talked about women who loved women? Were there songs about women dealing with um, ideas of childcare and violence in our lives? And what, what were the topics that were really um, on the top 90 or the top 100 or the top 40, whatever? Was I included and how did I want to go forward? And um, was I able to bring music and my love of women, my love of politics, my love of justice, was I able to bring it together to voice things that were not um, being voiced. And so mm. that's kind of how I got started in the 70s. And I started a choir um, after I was in Wisconsin, I went back to Philadelphia and taught at a different Quaker school. Um, and um, I started, that's when I started my first women's choir, Anna Cruz's women's choir in 1975. It's still going, I'm glad to say, and it's still got the same focus. Um, and just to let your audience know, they changed it from Anna Cruz's women's choir to Anna Cruz's feminist choir just in the last couple of years because they wanted it to be more inclusive of uh, um, LGBTQIA. And so, I think that they felt that women was, um, you know, limiting in a way. And so we wanted to expand it. So that's, that's exciting. Yes, um, it is. That they're still alive and well and going and known and singing for the same kinds of issues we're talking about. Um, and then after that, I came to Cincinnati to get my doctorate. And I started, I thought, gosh, I need a community of people because, you know, setting out to do your doctorate, making a big change. I brought my piano out here. Uh, I brought everything out here. I moved, period, and um, started doctoral work. And so I started a women's choir, Muse, Cincinnati's women's choir, to keep me sane. And of yeah. course, immediately there were, of course, things that were happening, right? I think a year or two after we started, the abortion clinics in Cincinnati were bombed. And um, so I felt, wow, you know, we have to we have to sing at benefits to bring those uh, those uh, buildings and the, those import that important work back. And so that was when we, um, you know, within the choir, some people said, well, I don't I don't think we're that's who we are, you know, and the other and a lot of women said, no, this is definitely who we are, you know, that we believe that women have that right. If you don't if you don't feel that way. Um, you know, please don't stop somebody else who needs this uh, from, you know, having it be them be able to carry out, you know, a woman's right to choose what she does. So, you know, we've been in the mix. And once you get starting uh, to do work like this, you're going to have, you're going to bump into things and bump into clashes and, you know, so yeah, uh, yeah we uh, I'll tell you just another short story, you know, um, do you remember Cindy Sheehan? She's the woman who, uh, the gold uh, medal mother who lost her son in Iraq. And she went yep. and camped out at George W. Bush's place just, I think it was just before he got elected a second time or whatever. Anyway, she she put up a tent or whatever right there in Texas uh, on his driveway. Anyway, we had her 
Muse had her come and speak at a concert. Um, and we uh, had her collaborate with a woman, oh gosh, it was called um, um, Mothers Against, uh, um, oh God, I can't remember, um, Iraqi Mothers Against Violence, something like that. And so we combined that with a concert. So, you know, when you start to step out, um, you're going to get uh, pushback. People, got, uh, WLW got calls, you know, and said, um, well, it, did they get state money? Does that choir get state money? They shouldn't get state money, you know, when they take these stances and stuff like that. So anyway, it was, it was kind of wild. Yeah. With everything that we've been through and with all of your years of working diligently to give voice and amplify the voice of equality, what are we, in your perspective, what are we still missing? I feel like, are, is, is, are we missing something to continue to have to have these conversations over and over and over again? Yeah, I mean, I think what we're missing is um, that everything, everything is connected. And so that one issue is connected to another issue, the intersectionality. Um, and I think that people don't understand that. Right. I was just I just got off a phone call because uh, the World House Choir got asked to sing at an um, anti-death penalty rally that's going to happen um, in Columbus in October. And so people came to us for that reason. And so uh, the death penalty, you know, that that's a justice issue out front. Right. And yeah. um, the abolitionist movement to understand how we can deal with justice when injustice is done right when when somebody commits a crime what you know there are way different ways of dealing with this but it all has to do with um um equity equality how how we treat each other um and there's there's so much injustice and to realize that um all of the issues whether we're talking about women's issues whether we're talking about lgbtq whether we're talking about issue one that just passed uh and um uh or i should say issue one that we're voting on that we want to pass um about a woman's right to choose reproductive freedom um or we're talking about i was just reading this morning in the newspaper um about a young man who was uh, murdered by police um, and you know that issue around George Floyd and everything that's come an awareness that's come since then these are issues that um, have to do with um, I want to say uh, systemic racism and there's a lot of systemic things that are problems right now and so if we can bring these things uh, bring the awareness to these things and then the actions that are, that follow, that should follow from our awareness. So singing for me is uh, bringing people together to sing is an element that is different than bringing people together to listen to speeches and, um, uh, you know, lectures, right? when when people sing together something the air changes something you know gets excited and people feel motivated and inspired to act so you it's good to have the spoken word and it's good to have the sung word and get people changing the air what happened in the civil rights movement that we've heard so much about when people in those churches started singing the cops didn't want to go in the dogs you know they 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 were it was a wall of sound that present prevented people um well i should say the officers from you know walking into those churches um yeah so you know what i mean it's it's a powerful tool um and you can have people who are quite different from each other singing right next to each other right mm. people who might not understand the issues of race and how that you know affects us or the issues for lgbtq people and the inequality we face um, uh, and of course these things are ramping up against us. That's why that amazing song that you're singing, um, in a concert coming up, something inside so strong. Um, so there's something about singing and music and singing together in community. And that's really also what we're talking about. We want to build yeah. community and how, how best can we do that to touch each other's lives? 
I love that. And building community is um, so important. And you do that so well in so many different, um, in so many different ways, but using your unique uh, gifting for connection and teaching and music. We're going to talk about the upcoming concert and kind of get into the why of some of the selections that you chose. But you also are heavily involved in working with second chance opportunities for people who have been incarcerated. When you started to go into um, prisons and see what goes on in there, why did you think that hope was needed in that way and not just kind of look at it like a lot of people do. It's like, well, that's where they are. That's where they decided to be. And that's it. Yeah. Um, so the most, the, what I've realized from going inside and doing these choirs is that when the men or the women are in the act of making music with themselves, but also then bringing people in from the outside to hear them, they, they don't feel like they're inside a prison. They do not feel like they're uh, confined by the walls around them. They feel uh, that they can express who they are, you know, and, and that they can sing out pieces. Uh, we've done a lot of pieces by men who are inside, right, who have written the music. That's very powerful. But to understand, let's say, let's say a lot of uh, guys come and they have a, a, a familiarity with gospel music. Well, that's one kind of music. And if I bring in spirituals, which really predate gospel, right? Um, they're fascinated by how these musics uh, um, are, are all related, right? Even if we do, we do hip hop, where does hip hop come from? It go, we can go back 400 years to the griot, right? In West Africa, the storyteller. And so there, we do these kinds of connections because I don't teach music in isolations. It's, I teach it in its mm -hmm. cultural context so that we're learning history, we're learning culture, we're learning uh, about social systems through, through the music. But for the people inside, it's a release to not feel that they're inside. And then I'm coming in and I, you know, there's that of God in everybody that is um, part of what Quakers believe. And so I don't ask what the um, what people did. I don't look people up about what they did. That's not how I come in. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to come in. And these are people who have shown up. They want to make music. They want to. They want to change their lives in some way. Um, I'm. I'm not sure I'm answering your question. You are. I yeah. am. Okay. Yeah. No. That's. Um. Yes. 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 And yes. Yeah. So when I bring in, I've brought in composers who have written music that the people are singing inside. Right. Dr. Issa Maria Barnwell went into DCI Dayton Correctional, and we did a piece. Um, a 30-minute piece. Uh, with Earlham uh, Women's Choir, Earlham College Women's Choir. We put those two things together. And the piece was about a 15-year-old girl, African-American girl, who um, only who lived with her Nana. And um, uh, the, the beginning of the piece talks about her life. You know, there were no mirrors in my Nana's house. I didn't know, know that my nose was too flat. I didn't know my skin was too black. I didn't know my clothes didn't fit because the beauty and everything was in her eyes. And so she learned to internalize that. And through the piece, her Nana dies. And so at the end of this work, um, she sings, um, um, I am sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty in the world through my own eyes. So through this relationship with her Nana, she understands that she has what she needs as a 15 year old young girl of color to, to deal with the world. So you put that, and then you have the women in, in, who are incarcerated, who are doing the narration, doing the singing, and then the composer is right there. Uh, it was, you know, what can I say? It was um, very powerful, yeah. So, um, you know, you want people to experience, people are locked up, uh, people are um, isolated, and um, who are incarcerated. And actually, you know, we, we experienced a little bit of that during COVID, right? That's one of, one of the guys inside said, you know, when I was thinking about it, he said people on the outside during COVID um, were isolated and they were very uncomfortable, many people with it. 
And that's, he said, that maybe taught you a little bit about our situation, right? Being so removed and everything. Anyway, I'm going off topic. <laughs> no, that's, um, that last part is some, is like an aha moment. It's like, yeah. mm, I never really thought about it that way. I love how um, intentional you are with the music, even um, telling us the lyrics of that, the song that you just did. At the concert coming up, there's a song called uh, To Sit and Dream. And some of the lyrics say, all of you who are dreamers to help me make our world anew. I reach out my hand to you. At this concert, the 10th anniversary of the World House Choir, what do you want people to pull out of this music that you've selected specifically for this time? Wow, well, you know, it is a retrospective in a way. So we, we're singing things we've sung before, but our emphasis is on bringing people together to acknowledge what's going on and what, what is still, what is going on, but what we've suffered in a way in the last uh, time period um so people i want people to feel hope mm. that is major that even as we struggle and deal with loss the loss that is literal in terms of people's lives um because we've lost people in the choir have have lost family members uh to to covid um but we also lo lost some innocence maybe you know with george floyd and and the murder of george floyd and then um that was just uh the most obvious thing that we saw um but there have been these things happening with uh police um violence in terms of black lives and brown lives and uh so people started awakening a little bit so there um what I want to show is that I hope not to do too much talking so that the music itself will weave a tale. We start out with, I woke up this morning with my mind, um, stayed on freedom, comes out of the freedom mm -hmm. movement, but that was uh, also a spiritual, right? Mm -hmm. And then I have invited, um, on Thursday night, you'll hear a rap called um, by a man who calls himself black, Michael Powell, and America's Nightmare. And it's an mm. incredible piece that he wrote. And he's a very dark skinned uh, black man who was incarcerated. He was Lafayette in, in the Hamilton project that we did. Um, and he presents the words to let, to educate people, you know, I didn't have no drugs. I didn't have, you know, I didn't eat chicken every morning. You know, he goes through a litany of things uh, that people, think about him when they see a black man and they see a young a young black man um but i'm not he's saying i'm not any of those things but that's your your nightmare it's america's nightmare mm. I, I happen to be america's nightmare and talking about that then um then there's some hopeful pieces uh like um john legend wrote an amazing piece um if you're out there uh, let's get together let's sing together um we uh and that was written in 08 when Obama's campaign was going on. The person who's singing that was formerly incarcerated with uh, me in a choir. And so that's really important. That's an important aspect. I wanna try and um, educate people that amazing um, music is coming out from people, amazing writing literature. Uh, and so we are going to do a piece uh, written by someone who is still inside, who sings with me. Um, and we're having some young people sing that. It's a new world we want to live in. It's on us to make a difference. Hey, it is, right? It's on us. That's, that's really what I think the whole concert might be about. It's on us to make a difference. Um, you're singing an amazing song um, that galvanized the, the, really the lesbian and gay community. Um, something inside so strong, a passion, um, you know, you're trying to suppress my voice. Um, you're trying to take my rights away. But we're gonna we're gonna fight. We're gonna do it anyway. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna get together. We're gonna make these changes, etc. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, and then you know, we're doing a piece of greed. I just think. I mean, if I could just find the words to that, uh, greed is a poison. I don't know. Here, I have it actually right here. If I can just read a little. Yeah. Um, greed is a poison in this land 
the soul of a people twisted in its command. Um, it goes on and on. Greed driven men created slavery. Black men, women, and children became somebody's property. Mm. Greed is a strain in the American dream. Having more than you need is the essential theme. So, I mean, there's mm. line after line uh, like that. And that, of course, is a strain, just like systemic racism is a strain. And can we understand these strains by voicing in music so people can? Um, you know, we're not um, being dogmatic and, and, and stamping our foot and everything like that. We're singing these words and we're a community of people making that music. Um, so greed, whoa, greed. Yeah, isn't that a, a lot about what we're facing? Um, Absolutely. I mean, think of the strike that just started today with the um, AEW, you know. Um, yep. Uh, you know, pe the, the, the workers are getting infinitesimal amount of money compared to the CEOs and everything. And it's gotten way out of hand. Mm. I mean, we could go there, right? We could, we could yeah. go so many places. Um, uh, then we're doing room at the table. This mm. is also, you know, there's room at the table for everyone. It's not like the pie gets smaller, right? Yeah. When we increase the rights of black people, of, of voting rights, of, of lesbian and gay people, of women having the right to choose what they do. You know, uh, there's room at this big table that we're, mm. you know, the, the, the world house. There's room yeah. in the world house. Um, let's see, what else? Christopher G. Smith is going to sing. Um, sometimes I feel, we're singing it with him. He's soloing. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. And it was really interesting when we were rehearsing this for the first time, there were two sopranos over here who said one lost her mother to, to COVID um, who's in the choir and the other young woman, um, her mother died when she was very young. And they both, they said they were both fighting tears when we brought that out for the first time because that resonates so much with so many people. But these two young women over here, I was really conscious when we started singing that, that they were, they were feeling, they were, you know, I don't know if they really were singing, they were feeling and um, they were crying or tears were in their eyes and stuff like that. So um, there's just, um, and then there's a piece we're doing um, called I Am Willing. And that's another whole thing. We're gonna get the audience singing. Um, uh, what are the words? What? I am willing. Um, um, I am willing. You know, I am. Uh, for to be hopeless would seem so strange. It dishonors those who go before us. So lead us up to the light of change. And so that's really, really what we're, we want to honor what's gone before us and the work that we have to do ahead. And where it's going to be great when we do it together when we gather together and move yeah. forward on these things that you know everybody knows these things are they're with us every day the environment and what's happening to the environment uh when rights are being taken away it's we see it right yeah. i mean <laughs> so uh music and choral singing right you don't have to be you don't have to be trained mm -hmm. right that's a, the beautiful thing if you're in an orchestra yeah. you've been practicing the violin for a long time if you're uh if you have the passion and the willingness and the love to sing show up and yeah. join you know so that's a little bit about what what's happening uh at the concert i hope i've uh communicated enough you know what you have given us such um a great uh perspective not just on the what but the why and the spirit behind it because if the concert, I'm sure it will be, is even a little bit as dynamic as your explanation of it and how you're presenting it, it's gonna be incredible. The passion behind it all makes it all make sense. And one of the things you said, um, people aren't just coming, you know, the World Health Choir is more than just people coming together and seeing there's life happening, there are friendships being made, there are people who are helping people through things. 
So it's just not a choir. It's it's definitely more of a community, a family, if you will, but it's more than just coming together and seeing there's purpose, there's intention behind the songs, and there's change that happens because of it. And we're gonna get to see that um, coming up here shortly for those who have never on the the 21st, 22nd, and the 23rd. Yep, I'm, I'm very excited. And you know, we, um, we, we wanna, I hope, I'll put this out, we wanna attract more people deaf people because we have the we we're it's being interpreted for the deaf and um i i want us as a, as a community to be able to reach out um in cincinnati with uh, muse we we had established uh, a reputation in the deaf community so that we always had deaf people in in the audience and that was education for the people in the audience who were hearing right? Because deaf people heard through, you know, the vibrations in the floor, but they also made sounds because they were excited. And so you mm. wondered, well, those were different sounds than you've heard before, but they were enjoying and moving into the, the sounds of the music as they could and watching. And so I hope we can achieve that here. Um, and so I'm, I'm appreciative that, of that. And um, also, you know, we, we want young people to be singing who have families. And so, you know, we do offer childcare and mm. a shout out to, uh, when this goes up that if you have children and you want to come and you want to put them in childcare, give us a call, mm. um, so that we're no, so that we know you're coming. So it, it, we're talking about accessibility too. Yeah, inclusion. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. those, those are really important. And so how big is our world? Let's, let's open it up. Yeah. And I, again, it goes to intentional. You're intentionally including people. And I think that's just, that's just who you are. It's like everybody, you know, again, room at the table, everybody come, you need this. Okay, we'll do that. So everybody can be here. Everybody can participate. Everybody can experience and everybody has the opportunity to also change. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you. You're, you're a great interviewer and you're a great singer and a great person. So thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is Dr. Kathy Roma and the World House Choir standing on the side of Love and Justice 2013 to 2023. The World House Choir 10th anniversary concert is coming up at the Foundry Theater on September the 22nd at 7 and Saturday, September the 23rd at 4 o'clock with an open dress rehearsal for the sneak peek on Thursday the 21st at 7 o'clock. This is not just the choir to come sing. You can but there's more, there's connection, there's passion, there's meaning, there's community. Um, and if you can just tell by the passion that Dr. Kathy has, you understand why the World House Choir is the World House Choir and why so many people continue to be impacted positively, including myself, by her example and her in. Inclusion. So go to worldhousechoir.org to find out more about Dr. Kathy Roma and the upcoming concert. And if you want to get involved with the World House Choir, there's child care. So make sure that you do that. For more information, please go to philippawork.com. And we will see you next time. And remember, you are the best you in the world. I'll see you. Don't